Hello, welcome to part three of my Universally Good series with Alex Trebek, where we'll be sculpting more details of the face. Let's just dive right in. So, whoops, I hit a button. What did that do? Oh, it changed that. Okay, there we go. Let's just keep going on the face for now. This one might be a little bit of a longer video while I just kind of keep plugging away at achieving more of this resemblance. So, Let's see, the first thing that I kind of want to do is focus a little bit more on the ears, and specifically this ear into the jawline here, and get the jaw and the, the side of the cheek working really well. So I'm going to pay attention to kind of this line that I pointed out earlier, and maybe we'll put in some hair too, so that we, can, we don't have to look at him bald, because having some hair there will definitely help with um, the resemblance. So I'm just going to go in with my Damien Standard brush here and kind of carve out a little bit more of the ear shape, smooth it, but we need this ear to kind of come up a little bit more so that it's not falling into the head quite so much. Get a good crease in there. Oops, that's too much. inflate it a little bit, smooth it down, and then we're just going to go through, um, let me just move this a little bit so I can see where that ear is without my shortcuts being in the way. Let me just get the shape of this working a little bit better. Where this is kind of coming out, it's a little bit more rounded, and then the ear lobe, it's very, it's very much a, um, kind of slanted backwards, kind of like that. There's like a little bit of an indentation right here. Right here in this part. I don't want to spend too long on the ear because we're definitely not there yet. We still have to work on the overall cheek and face shape. Let me go through and add a little bit more into the neck here. Smooth it down. And he's got these jowls underneath, so let's go and put those in there, just so we have these landmarks. And right now we're working with symmetry, but later on in the series I will be turning the symmetry off and adjusting parts of the face that aren't quite symmetrical. No face is perfectly symmetrical. That's just how nature is. Bring that chin out a little bit more. So let's smooth that forehead down a little bit. Hmm. The mouth is, is not looking correct, but we can get to that later. Still want to work on this jawline a bit, pulling it back, maybe down. Take my smooth intensity down a little bit so I don't go overboard. And then let me just kind of outline, not that strong, but outline a little bit more of where the jaw would sit. Right in there. And he is, his jaw isn't in a totally neutral position in this image, so kind of have to like read between the lines a little bit about where his jaw sits with a closed mouth. Same in this one. Not going to spend too much time on that jaw because I think our final image of him is going to be more straight on. One other thing to keep in mind too is the perspective of the camera. If I turn that off, it flattens out a lot. Um, so that's something that we'll have to consider when we're making this is what uh, focal length the camera's at. Okay, let's 
see what area needs some more tweaking. Definitely more in the brows. I'm gonna go and pinch, pinch these brows up a little bit. And if I go back and look at some of the notes that I made along the brow, I can see it's pretty flat right there. Definitely doesn't protrude as much in that one. But in this one, it kind of does on the side. Let's see, whoops. Flatten up that side of the temple. So that we have that nice temple shape coming in. And then, let me mask off the eyelids again, whoops. And I just wanna grow that mask a little bit so that I can get up into that area. So I'm gonna go into my masking and grow it and maybe sharpen it up. Just smooth it down a bunch. Now I just kind of want to go through and pinch along here a little bit, smooth it back. Let's put these landmarks back into place for the wrinkles. And let's add a little bit more of a nose bridge just for, to have that as a reference. I know his nose doesn't quite do that. Looking right here at this part of the brow. And let's see. I think I want to go in with and try to like kind of pick out where that ridge happens. Maybe I'll move this back a little. Like that. Head back. I think that's looking a little bit better. This definitely comes down. He definitely has more tissue right here. So I'm gonna go in and add some more volume with the clay brush. Smooth it back. And I, I kinda like hopping around to different parts of the face because um, it kinda keeps it, keeps it fresh. If you keep moving around a little bit, then it's it's easier to not get too off track. Let me go in with the brush and really outline this a little bit more. Because we don't even see his upper eyelid in most of these shots. His upper eyelid is not prominent because it's so tucked under. So we're going to have to tuck that back a lot. Let me mask that. Actually, I will invert that and then just bring it way down. Well, maybe not so much. I'm going to go to my mask lasso.
it's all kind of trial and error. You kind of have to make some guesses and then just see, does that look right or does that not look right? Does that look closer to the picture or does it look less close to the picture? going to be a pretty tricky area to detail because it just is so tucked under in there. Let me just like go extreme for a second. Whoa. <laughs> and then I'll smooth it back. I'm just like lightly tapping it to smooth it. And maybe I'll move it up a little bit. Do a little bit more smoothing. just so we can see. Keep inflating that. We don't really want them to intersect because we're gonna need some shadow definition in there. Okay, they're looking too flat, so they need to come out more. It's looking a little bit closer. We've lost some of the volume here in his brow. And I also want to go through and pinch this up a little bit so that we get this highlight right there. Smooth it back. Move the back. Okay, now I'm kind of noticing this temple is, let me go back to the draw over. I drew over this one a little bit too much, but it kind of goes out and in and out and down right along that line so out in out down oops and that is not what this is doing so let's move it into place And like I said in the first video, he's got a really rectangular shape in the top of his head. You know what I'm actually gonna do now is give him some hair. And the way that I'm gonna do that is pretty easy. It's gonna be temporary hair. Go through with my, where is it? My mask, mask, brush, mask pen. And I will start shading where it looks like his hairline will go. I'm looking at this one mainly. You know, it might be worth dividing this mesh down a little bit more just for the resolution of the hair. Just 
coloring that in around the ear to the back of the head. Back here won't matter so much because we're not going to see that in the final image, but just to give us something to look at with hair. And now I'm going to be going in later and doing the hair in X-Gen. So feel free to stick around for that part of the series or even just watch that part of the series if all you want to learn how to do is, is X-Gen hair, but that comes, that comes a bit later. For now, we just need to get some, just some basic hair going on. And then to create the hair, I will go to Extract, and I'll extract some hair. And then I'll press Accept. And now we can smooth these sides a little bit. But this is, this is really basic hair. This isn't going to look that great. It's just going to be here for the purposes of just showing us where the hair is going to go. Take that down. And it got some extra volume on the top. Smooth it. Got a lot of volume in the front. I'll bring it down. And then we can use this as a guide for later too. Actually, now that we can see it with the hair and where that hairline is falling, his forehead needs to be a little wider. Wider, wider. And it goes back more. Still just working on the shape of the forehead and the temples. Noticing these lines right here. I do want to put more volume in this area. So I'm, I'm painting on this side of his face, or not painting, sculpting, but I'm looking at the other side. I'm looking at the profile. Just want to go through and add whoops a little bit of volume right in there okay I think that shape of the forehead is looking a little bit better it's still looking kind of bulbous take it back whereas it seems like maybe his foreheads a little bit more flat That's not the right call. Like I said, trial and error. I'm gonna go through and since I've lost some of that detail in here, put this back just for landmarks.
start to carve out some of the eye, eye area. Right here you can see a really good place where his eye bag is on both sides. Just move it back. getting there. A lot of work on the eyes and brows, but I think it's getting closer. Sometimes I just like to put in bold lines too, and then smooth them back so that we can see, okay, did that help or did that hurt the resemblance? Put in some bold lines and then smooth them back. The temple area is still bothering me a little bit. I know he's looking kind of mean right now, but I promise that's not going to be the, the final look. It's just kind of what we have to do to start getting the resemblance. I always want to make sure my lids aren't losing too much detail. When we go through and detail the eyes in a later, in a later episode, I will make sure the lids have a nice crispy waterline across the bottom. I just want to move around a little bit more of these landmarks. This nose line comes up a lot higher but the shape of his nostril is actually kind of it's not that tall he doesn't have a very sharp nostril crease. flatten the sides of the nose a little bit. I'm actually going to use H polish. H polish and flatten are they they feel pretty similar, but sometimes I have better results with H polish than I do with flatten. But really I th the move brush is kind of my favorite brush. Just going through, touching a little bit of the nose, touching a little bit of the eyes, touching a little bit of the brow. Just kind of worrying about the overall look and the overall proportions. Here we can even put them next to there to see, okay, is the mouth in the right spot? Well, when you smile, your mouth does go up a little bit, which we can adjust when we do the expression. But I will move the mouth up a little bit and the jaw as well. Let me make that move brush a lot bigger so that I can just do sort of an overall shrink. And here we can pose them this way a little bit and see, okay. Definitely that hairline is not working. <laughs> Definitely that is the wrong hairline. It is up a lot more. This hair also comes forward, which I know this looks very, very odd, but it's kind of good to do. It's good to do just so you know. 
that's where it's going to live. Okay, let's go look at, yeah, that looks funny now. <laughs> let's look at him from this side. I can even go into spotlight and turn down the opacity a little bit. And we can see, try to line them up. And keep in mind, these are all different focal lengths. So none of these images are going to be completely perfect spot on. But I don't really care about it being perfectly spot on. I care about it being, I care about it resembling him. That's the goal. We got to do an overall move the forehead out. Move everything the eyes later. I think I'm going to stop the video here and then next time next time we will be working on more more detailing maybe we'll go into the mouth and the nose a little bit more and really get the mouth shapes working really well and that'll definitely help with the resemblance too people have really distinct mouths distinct noses we're just going to go through and keep comparing to the photo reference that we have and then just keep chipping away at the resemblance see you in the next video